everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and I'm back after a short hiatus and what a video to come back to. We have the Artful quarterly subscription box here and this is for the month of September. Out of all the art subscription boxes that I unbox on this channel, this is by far my favourite and I always look forward to it. And I don't know whether it's because it is a quarterly box, you know, maybe there's more novelty involved in it, but I just always feel it's a really big, rounded box and there's a lot of thought goes into them. So if you're not familiar with these boxes, this is by the parent company Odeer and they do a selection of subscription boxes, including the Paper Gang box. And they usually centre their box around a theme and give you loads of information and loads of tutorials as well around a particular medium. As I mentioned, it is a quarterly box, so you get one box every three months. So they're slightly more expensive per box than the more traditional monthly boxes. But obviously you get a lot more stuff in it for your money. So they're very, very worthwhile in terms of the monetary input as well. I'm loving the cover of this box and sometimes this gives us an indication of what's inside and it looks to me that it might be pastels or pastel pencil. Okay, so inside the cover, a pasta evangelists. <laughs> Oh dear, uh, pasta kits, the, this is something that I definitely don't need, um, I'm Italian. Okay, uh, oh they've put a little protective cover in here, I like this. Regular new content, throughout the quarter we release new content which you can access via their website. Uh, you can upgrade your box, so if you enjoy the box, they, cu they curate an upgrade box for each new edition, so if you want to uh, level up your supplies you can do that as well. Oh, this looks very professional. Right, I'm just going to pop the box off to the side here. I'm loving the orange and teal combination as well. It kind of reminds me of cans of iron brew for those of you that are Scottish or English people that like to drink iron brew. Okay, the first thing I always look at is the surface that we're given. And Artful usually provide us with a pad and that is exactly what they have done. And this is mixed media paper this time. This is all their own brand paper. So this particular paper obviously is A4 and it's made in the UK. It's a it's 140 pounds, which is 300 GSM. So kind of like standard weight for watercolor paper. So it's suitable for watercolor, pencil, pen, ink, calligraphy, pastel, and oil pastel. So I just want to have a quick feel of this. So yep, yeah, it does feel textured. It looks very much like their watercolor paper. Now hang on a minute. It just so happens, this is their watercolour pad. I'm not sure if this is exactly this. This is the watercolour paper down the bottom here. It is a slightly different colour. This is more of like an off-white. But it looks very, very similar. There is more texture on this paper. Okay, just checking. I always like to test these things out. Okay, so a bit more of a tooth on this. As always as well, uh, every now and then they give us a little set of their greetings cards. These are the blank greetings cards with envelopes so you can put your own designs on them and uh, I find them really handy in a pinch if you've forgotten someone's birthday or you want to give someone a thank you card and you can just doodle your own design. So this is 280 GSM board suitable for wet and dry media. So we have an artful pencil, it's a pencil, uh, this is a 4H pencil so this is a very very hard pencil and this leads me to think that the pastel thing might just be the case uh, because with a 4H pencil there'll be very little smudge, you know if you were to run something over the top of it very little graphite would be picked up by the media that you're using over the top of it so this is obviously for us to sketch out our designs. I do use the F pencil that we got in a previous box, it's actually sitting right here because I use it quite a lot um, and I I do quite like it as a pencil. They're reasonably good quality pencils so they're handy to have around. This looks like a needed eraser. It's squishy and it's very blue. <laughs> God, that's just our paper. So we'll, we'll test that out in a little while. And we also have another Artful paintbrush. Now I love the Artful paintbrushes and I use them quite a lot. They were originally given to us in a box and uh, used for acrylic paint. It was actually acrylic inks we got. I have used these for watercolour as well and I really, really like them. So this one, I think this is a filbert. It's kind of hard to tell with the bristles have been just squished in together there. Uh, but this, this is like a number 11 filbert. So a filbert brush has this rounded top on it. So it looks like a flat brush, but it's got a slightly curved top on it. We also have a selection of blending stumps. So we've got a fat one, a middle-sized one and a skinny one. So these are, as suggested, used for blending pastel and sometimes pencil together as well. You can use them to burnish pencil too. And these are really, really good. I've got more of these than I know what to do with, so I'll stick some of them in the stash shop. Uh, but basically, once you've used them, you can actually sand the ends off to bring it back to a point and clean off any pigment that's left on. I'll give you a wee demonstration of that when we go to test out the supplies. 
Now, this is the magazine, and this is one of the things that I really, really like about Artful, and they've gone from strength to strength as their boxes have gone along. Look at the thickness of this magazine. It's like a, it's like a small book, but it is absolutely jam-packed full of stuff. And they've listened to what people have said about the magazine. The first magazine was very, very weak, but obviously in a first box you would expect that. So it says here, let's learn about soft pastels and other stuff. So these lovely swanky boxes that look like Iron Brew, that's what's going to be in them. So what have we got here? Artful six pastel pencils. So let's have a wee look here. Now this is really funny because about two weeks ago I put uh, some pan pastels up in the stash shop and when I posted on social media about them I said it's about time I did something else in pastels because I've not used them for a while. Da da! <laughs> okay, let's have a wee look. Oh, oh these are nice. So these are these are very matchy matchy with our paintbrush as well which I quite like. So we've got six colours here, uh, black, grey, blue, red and yellow. So these are circular barrels and it seems to be quite a thick diameter barrel which is nice as well because the the thing with soft pastels is they're notoriously hard to sharpen most people sharpen them with a knife which I'm personally not comfortable with just because I've got motor function issues with my hand but uh, the thicker the barrel is obviously the more it's protecting the core as well and the thicker the core is the less likely it is to break so these look like fairly good quality I'll be interested to see what they're like on paper my experience of pastel pencils is quite limited I tend to use the Faber Castell uh, pit pastel pencils they what I sort of gravitate towards. I have tried the Derwent ones and they're horrible. I really don't like the Derwent ones. I find them very dry and scratchy. So it'll be interesting to see how these compare to that. 24 soft pastels. Oh, oh. And surprisingly minimal breakage. I've only got two here. This is very common. It doesn't matter how well you package up pastel sticks like this. This is gonna happen. It doesn't affect what's going on with the pastels themselves. And uh, these look lovely. Look at the range of colours. I am really excited about this. I love the box as well. It's really sturdy. It's quite classy looking as well. This feels like a really, you know, expensive, well-produced product. And I love this about Artful as well, that they're making their own supplies. You know, they're, they're doing this properly. I quite like the colour choice. There doesn't seem to be a lot of earth tones, which for me, uh, that would be preferable just because I tend to do things from nature, draw a lot of animals, but we can do some brightly coloured animals with these. So these look absolutely fabulous. So let's pop these to the side. So we'll have a look through the magazine and then we'll get down to testing some supplies. This box retails at the UK for £35. Obviously that's Great British Pounds. I'll put up some conversions for you on the screen just now for those of you that are elsewhere. Obviously if you're outside the UK you're going to have shipping on top of that so you need to go and check for your country if it's something that you fancy trying out. So on the first couple of pages, it just tells you a little bit about Artful and the extra things that they do because they uh, they send out tutorials as well. Righty ho ho. So here are our supplies. Let's have a quick look at this. Set of 24 Artful Soft Pastels. Recommended retail price is $39.95. An incredibly vibrant set of premium quality soft pastels. That was the first thing that smacked me in the face when I opened that box and it was the same with the watercolour paints as well. So I hope these are as vibrant as the watercolour paints because if they are, we are winners, guys. We have selected a full spectrum of colours to maximise outcomes. Eh, I would have preferred more earth tones myself, but that's okay. Fully blendable, allowing you to create a whole host of different shades by mixing colours together. Upgrade for an additional 24 colours, see page 100, so we'll check that out later on. The pencils, 11.95. A uh, more precise way to apply pastel to the page. So these are really good for defining lines, putting in highlights, that kind of thing, and shadows as well, because you've got that little bit more precision. Although I have to say that with these stick pastels, because they're round, if you use the very edge of them, you can still get some fairly detailed and fine lines. So that's not so much of an issue, but it is always nice to have the addition of the pencils. The putty rubber, you can mould this to a fine point or a specific shape in order to effectively erase tiny details. Pick out highlights or simply use it to erase a mistake. We all make them. Yes, we, yes, we do. The Artful 4H pencil. 
Recommended retail price £2.40. That's a bit steep for a pencil in my opinion. Uh, but the, the hardness is perfect for sketching for pastels. It's like an under sketch. Mixed media paper, 25 sheets, uh, 300 GSM. So we've talked about that already and it just says basically what it says on the cover of the pad itself. The greetings cards we've talked about as well. They do have a slight texture on them so you could potentially use pastels on them too. The Filbert brush, a beautiful brush with rounded edges. This can be used to apply crushed pigment, remove dust and for blending. So they're giving you this with a view to using it dry. Uh, I will, for the purposes of this demonstration, I will do that. But afterwards, I'll probably wash it thoroughly and use it as a paintbrush for wet media. Uh, just because it's something that I do and I really like these brushes. Paper stumps, used to blend pigment together. They can be cleaned by sharpening or with sandpaper. Again, I'll show you that as we go along. This very magazine, over 100 pages of interviews, tutorials and inspiration. And I do find this magazine very, very inspiring. It talks about the upgrade box here as well. Sign up for the upgrade box to get an additional 24 shades of soft pastels. So you're essentially doubling your selection if you get the upgrade box. More information on how the box artwork was made by Rachel B on page 102. We try and pack in as much value as we can. And that's one thing I have to say, even if a particular box isn't your thing, in terms of the quality of the products that are in it, you definitely, definitely get value for money with these because nearly everything that we've had from Artful so far has been very high quality. Okay, so the first page is a brief history of soft pastels, so getting up on your art history as well. So not only can you become an artist, but you can become a knowledgeable artist this is the kind of thing i sit and read with a cup of tea and uh, the editor's notes so this is jamie who is the head honcho at artful and he's he's a frightfully nice chap he's a lovely chap so there's a little bit from him there so Irina morozova uh, beautiful and gestural Irina packs a punch with color and texture so she's painted some flowers here now when we're talking about pastels most pastel artists will refer to their pieces as paintings you paint with pastels that was something i learned a little while ago as well which i, I quite like that term it's good so this is a little interview with her and it's showing you some of her work here and her collection of pastels which is awesome i really like this this is very aesthetically pleasing because all the colors are grouped together well, there we go and that must be the box cover art would i be right i think so yes it is I love all these strokes, you know, she, she really is a gestural painter. You can see every line that she's put in and it's got a purpose and there's a reason it goes the way it goes. She covers quite a wide range of subjects as well. Look at this. I like this one the best and it's because of the light and you can see all the reflections off the bottle. You know, you guys know if you watch my channel regularly, I'm always banging on about light sources. So this makes me really happy and I would hang this on my wall. So uh, Janine's work is uh, slightly different from Irina's. Uh, you can see this is very sort of dark and, you know, oh, this is great as well. I love all this stuff. So she tends to favour the grayscale type efforts. It always amazes me how someone can create a, a really atmospheric piece of work with such few supplies. Like that that's a talent in itself, it really, really is. And I, I have nothing but respect for that because I always feel I want to keep adding things, you know, to make the picture look the way I want it to look. And for someone to be able to do this with a couple of charcoal or pastel sticks and and it's really all about our our lines, you know, it's it's actually our mark making that makes the picture, it's not the pastels. Like this, that must have taken forever. Uh, yeah, so I'm loving Janine's work. Yeah, this is really good. This is really nice. So nice little interview with her. So here is our first tutorial and it is a snuggly cat. <laughs> There's an asterisk after it that says underneath snuggly cat wants to kill you. <laughs> so, it so it does follow, follow it step by step so that you can have a little shot at this yourself. And um, so even if you've never used pastels before, this is perfectly achievable and would be a great starting point for you if you're just messing about with them. Natalia Savastina. So we've got another interview. Oh, look at this. That's not, that is charcoal. Uh, that is pastel. Wow. From a distance like this, you would say that that was coloured pencil. And it's only when you actually like, see when you get like up really close and squint at it, you realise that it is pastel. That's a, that's a talent in itself. Oh, look at our watermelons. Oh. oh, this lady is talented. Oh, she might be my favourite so far. If I could achieve half of this in pastel, I would be really, really happy. <laughs> look, they're so bright as well. I love this. 
a sunset over water. Okay, this is more my kind of thing. Uh, let's make what could be overwhelming simple. So there's a little uh, step by step here and we've drawn it out and then every step is adding all your colours. That's a really good tutorial as well because that's something that can be achieved fairly simply but it gives you, you know, a really impactful result. I mean, look at that, that's beautiful. That would be well worth trying. Bethany Fields. Uh, so she looks like a landscape painter, just judging by what's going on down here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, I love these delicate colours. This is really nice. Oh, some of these are lovely. Ones to follow. So yeah, this is this is one of my favourite sections of the magazine because this is basically snippets of people's artwork um, just so that you can see what they do and then it gives you their Instagram and you can go and follow them on Instagram. And I usually quite enjoy this. The, look at this. This is lovely as well. This is quite an interesting concept as well, you know, Painting, but incorporating a photograph as well. I like that. Oh, Rahat Kaduji. Oh, look at these. These are adorable. I love this art style. Jess Miller. Oh, look at this. Ellen Porteous. Look how bright her artwork is. That's And that's a really distinct art style as well. That's so cool. That is super, super cool. Francisco Francesca. Oh, this is quite interesting. Oh, I'm going to follow all these people on Instagram. Okay, on to another tutorial. Now, the thing I like about these tutorials is there's they, they do tend to cover quite a few different subject matters, so there's usually something for everyone, and these are no exception. If you're a bit more skilled, you know, if you're maybe not at sort of beginner level, you can take these tutorials and follow them, and then you can add into them as well, and that's something else I really like about the tutorial side of things. Okay, so here's a little bit about uh, Create, and this is the charity that Artful support, and it tells you a little bit about what they do. That's really, really worth a read. And here is Katie Smith. <laughs> this is so bright and colourful. And here is a tutorial from Katie as well. So this one's a little bit more complex, so we're kind of upping, upping the skill level here. And again, takes you through it step by step. Ruben Beloso. Oh my goodness, here's another one. Pa that's never pastel in its puff. It is. Oh, these are so realistic. I never actually, like, I never connect pastels with realism. That's two things that don't go together in my head, but clearly it's a thing. Look at this. I think he does quite a lot of historical paintings. Oh, wow. That is just, that is just blown me away. That is just blown me away. That, that looks like a photograph. Come on, guys. Like, Wow. That is pastel. This gentleman has done this in pastel. That is insane. Holy moly. Okay, Alpine Lake. So we've got a, a simpler landscape to follow here as well. So this lady has done the upgrade box artwork. But look, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's a little bit of an interview with her as well. Oh, look. Love it. Absolutely love it. That's the really nice thing about pastel pencils. You can get really nice fur details and the pencil's soft enough so that it doesn't look very rigid and regimented, but it's also firm enough that you do get that definition between strands. That's one of the really nice things about pastel pencils. And a lot of animal portraiturist, portraiturists, whew, big word for me today, a lot of animal portraiturists do tend to favour pastel pencils, soft pastel pencils. And you can see why. This is exactly why. But this is lovely. Ah, look. Oh, the doggos. I li really like Rachel's work. Really, really like it. Okay, so here is the Soft Pastel Upgrade box. They've created two additional sets which feature practical spectrums, yellow, red and green, blue, offering you an additional 24 colours, meaning less blending. We're still going to blend them anyway. Uh, I would absolutely take this uh, yellow red box. I was talking about earth tones earlier. This is exactly the kind of thing that I would need. So forty-one ninety value for twenty pounds. So each set is nineteen ninety-five each. Very good indeed. So here, here's the cover of the upgrade upgrade box, and we were just talking about Rachel, and obviously this is her her cover art. And that's amazing. I think he's so super cute, and she's actually given you the step by step and how she's created this as well. I don't, this isn't as detailed. I don't think um, that she's going into every single step, but she's given you a pretty good go. So again, if you're more experienced and you want to try this out, then this would absolutely be worth it. I would be up for trying this just because I like to draw animals. Delicious desk spaces. 
I've talked about this quite a lot. I always enjoy this. Most of them are really bright and airy and like fresh and modern, which is the polar opposite of what I have because I live in a drafty old farmhouse that's kind of dark all the time. Uh, so it's actually quite nice to see this sort of space. Uh, okay, there's a little page on the past boxes. So if you fancy grabbing one of those... Oh, okay, so here's they talk about their daily drawing challenge on Instagram. If you follow them on Instagram, they give you a prompt every day. So if you're lacking some inspiration or you just want to draw something and you don't know what to draw, you can pop onto their Instagram and sort it out. So there you go. That is a bumper magazine once again. And I am suitably impressed with what is going on in this box. And my only hope now is, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that these supplies are nice to use, that they're high quality and they work well together. One criticism I have, the mixed media pad, working in pastel, working on white paper isn't the best. I prefer to work on mid-tone paper, so like a, like a sandy colour or even grey is much, much easier with pastel. White paper is not ideal and I think they've kind of missed a trick with that, but they have given you a ma massive pad of mixed media paper. So we can we can maybe let that one slide, but again, I maybe test these, I'll see how long this video is gonna be, but I might test these pastels on premium pastel paper, like pastel mat, I have some there. So I'm just gonna sort of shove everything out of the way now and we'll get down to business and test these supplies out. Okay, okay, let's boogie. I have got my cup of tea, so therefore I am ready to test out these supplies. Now, one of the things about soft pastels that I don't like is how dusty and messy they are. They are messy, so be prepared. That is going to happen without a shadow of a doubt. On the plus side, they are very forgiving. They're easily erasable and they're easily cleaned up as well compared to things like oil paint. So there is an upside and a downside. If you have any sort of respiratory problems, just be careful. I'm not suggesting that you have to start wearing masks and things, but be careful when you are when you're working with it and don't blow dust off the page because all you're doing is poof putting it up into the atmosphere and obviously you don't want to be breathing that in. And I'm going to start with the black and let's see what we can do with this. So pastel pencils, they are always going to feel a little bit dry compared to coloured pencils just because of the, the nature of the beast and the makeup. Um, but these actually feel fairly smooth and you can see the texture of the paper there just by me going over. So we do have quite a bit of texture on here, which is nice. I like that. And I just want to see how we get on building these up in layers. And that's fairly good as well. Okay, so the black's quite rich as well. So I just want to quickly do this. We're going to do the smudge test, but I'm going to do that afterwards once I've, uh, once I've gone through these colours. A fairly warm grey. Doesn't quite match the dipped end. There's a lot more brown in it than, than uh, blue or black. But still, that's uh, fairly nice. That, that uh, <laughs> I refer to that as elephant grey. Because <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's got that nice warm tone to it. I don't know how I feel about that colour. This one is a little bit scratchy. Uh, the, pigment, the pigment load isn't as good in this one. And it definitely doesn't feel as soft as the other ones. And again, the red, it's not its not really red. I would say that's vermilion going into orange. So the dipped ends definitely don't match the pencil. And it's a bit of a gripe I have about most types of pencils. And I know it's very difficult to get these to match up. But that's, there's, there's a fairly big difference in that. Especially artists, you know, you're very, very acutely aware of colour changes and the difference in colours. And if anyone's going to pick it up, it's going to be us. So that is a bit of a... Um, that's a bit of a shame. The yellow. Oh, the yellow is really vibrant and that feels nice too. And the white you won't be able to see, but I'm just going to pop a little bit over the edge here. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to try and sharpen one of these. Now, everyone's going to be like, oh, you're supposed to sharpen them with a knife. I will not sharpen anything with a knife because there is a chance that I'll take my hand off. And I really, really don't want that. <laughs> like, I really, really don't want that. So I do have a handful of sharpeners that are designed for pastels. Okay, this is the Creta Colour Sharpener. This came in a subscription box of some variety. And look at the point I've managed to get on that pencil. Absolutely no problem. So these sharpen really well, but look how fine a line I can get. It's just like having a normal pencil. So you're gonna get a lot of definition with that. 
And as long as you don't press too hard, because obviously these are quite soft, you'll be able to keep a point for a little while. I am I am super impressed with that. I'm going to sharpen the whole, the whole set, I think, just to get a point on them. Okay, so I seem to have a bit of an issue with my grey pencil. It, uh, it's not sharpening as well. And it may just be it's had a bit of a bump or whatever. But you can see there I've got some really nice points in those, so they sharpen really well. Having just had a little uh, a little scribble with those, I'm a bit disappointed that the upgrade box doesn't give you any more pencils. I thought that would have been, uh, you know, something that they would have done, but, you know. So we want to check out the smudgeability of these items. And the first and most obvious way to do that is with your finger. Now, you wouldn't expect as much smudge from a pencil as you would from a chalk pastel, but you can see there, just with the blue, I can actually soften that out with my finger fairly well and you can pull that pigment out and down so if you're wanting a really soft effect just in a certain area area and in my head I'm thinking like a shadow you know if you've got if you've drawn something and you want a shadow you can actually pull that out and start your shadow with that color so that's really cool as well that's really good and the other thing we want to try out is our eraser and it's a fairly big chunk of stuff as well oh it's so sticky it's really sticky oh Okay, I'm going to leave it in its current shape just because it means I've got a good corner. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. It's lifting quite a lot of it. It's not lifting all of it. I was kind of hoping for a bit more than that. Because if you think about it, how's that going to go with black or grey? That's a bit disappointing. In terms of malleability though, it is very, very squishy. There's no issues there. And the more you warm it up with your hands, the more malleable it will become. Okay, our, our 4H pencil. So really, really faint, hard lines we're gonna get from this. As I say, most pastels are sort of semi-opaque so if you have any graphite lines down chances are they will th show through and unless it's your art style obviously you want to keep that to a minimum but we can get super precise lines with this really really thin really light lines so again i'm just going to try and use this eraser and that's taken that away fairly well even just by uh, the, that rocking motion rather than rubbing that's taken away a lot of the graphite Again, because what you would do is you would lighten your lines up like this before you start. So the very faintest of it's left. So you can still see it, but when you start with your pastels, it's not going to be obvious. But if we actually rub, it's taking them away completely. And that's not upsetting the paper at all. You know, the integrity of the paper is very much intact when I do that. So that's really good to know as well. Obviously, you're not going to get much in the way of shading with this, but that's not what it's for. But if you wanted to, I mean, you can stick a couple of layers down there. So if, if like me, because quite often... When I'm finished a piece, I'll go back in with a graphite pencil and use it as a sort of finishing tool. So we've got the ability to do that with this here and you can actually get a fairly dark mark with that as well. So quite happy with that. I like that there's some delicate shades like this here. So let's try it on its side. Oh, that's soft. Soft, soft, soft. I'm not going to test every single colour, but I want to test some of the light ones and some of the darker ones. Okay, I'm, I'm suitably impressed with these in terms of laying them down. They go down lovely. Oh, look at that colour. Look at that colour. Oh, that's nice. I'm not very impressed with the selection of greens. We've got this kind of like viridian, emeraldy type colour. And we've got this more sap green, a light sap green maybe. If you're thinking about doing foliage, you're going to have to do a bit of mixing, which is the next thing I'm going to test out. So here we have our blending stumps. You can see they're pointed at both ends and these are basically, they're usually just smushed up cardboard or smushed up paper. You get ones that are in like a coil in a roll, uh, tortillions they're called. Uh, I prefer these because this is solid packed all the way through and these will last you forever. Like they, they really, really will. You can use these on their side. So this part here to soften something out. And if you go in a circular motion, you can see how that colour's blending out, even though we are on really, really textured paper here. And you can see the texture of the paper there. But if I work as softly in a circular motion, you can actually blend most of that out. 
Now as long as you don't press too hard, because if you press hard, what you're going to do is you're going to flatten the tooth or the texture of the paper. And that, that's basically the gripper that's picking up the pigment off of the stick. So if you squash that down so it's smooth, when you go to put more pastel on top of it, the paper won't take it, it'll just slide off. So there we go, you can see how well that blends out. And what that does is that's leaving pigment on your stump. So what you want to do is just wipe off the excess. I usually just use a rag. So take off as much as you can on that. And then you can use something like one of these wee sanding boards. So you literally buy it like this. And these are like tear off strips of, uh, of sandpaper. And all you need to do is run your blender over that. Now the other thing that you can do as well is because these have a point on them, if you want to use them to pull out sections or smaller sections like that, then what happens is your end starts to get blunt as well. So not only can you take off the excess colour, but you can actually sharpen these to a point. And the way to do it, I'm going to try and show you this way, is to hold it at a 45 degree angle like this. And when you're running it along the paper, you want to twist it like this, and that helps you keep your point. So if you do this kind of motion, and you just keep going until you've got a nice, a nice pointy point again. Now I have to say these stumps seem to be very soft and the end of this stump does not like me doing that. It's actually starting to twist the stump, like the, the tip's actually twisting round. I hope you can see that there. So this is actually quite soft um, and you might be better with a sharpener for this because that's just, it sent my tip wonky. So not too impressed with the blending stumps, maybe better with a sharpener for those. So we're going to test out the paintbrushes for blendability. The Filbert brush that came in the box isn't dry, obviously I've had to wash it to get the transit glue out of the bristles. So I've got the, I've got the number 14 Artful brush here instead. So same brand, same bristles, everything, but this is obviously dry. And I just want to see what happens if we use a brush for this. It's not particularly um, beneficial unless we put down a few layers, I think. But you can see the brushes blending together quite nicely and it's creating a very, very soft effect. So we can see there they're blending away quite nicely and again, even on textured paper, that's working pretty well. I find it quite odd doing this with a brush. I would rather use a sponge or a, a cotton bud or something like that. But it is absolutely doable and these brushes are fine. And the other thing that you can do is you can flick off any excess. Some of you that watch my colouring videos will know that I keep a soft makeup brush for that as well, just to get rid of the pigment. Um, if you use a harder brush, you can see I've got lots of dust pigment here. If you press hard into that, you're smearing it into the paper. So if you've got a really soft brush and you use a light flick, it'll ping it off your paper and keep it off your work. Alternatively, if you do get yourself into this sort of state, you've always got your eraser. So I've blended this quite hard now and I want to see how this eraser picks up the stuff that's been blended in. So I'm just going to cut a line right across the middle there. And the same thing as with the pencil, in the areas where we've worked the hardest, you know, where we've been working in, um, it's not lifting a huge amount of the pigment. So what we have to decide is, is this the eraser, is it the paper, is it the pastels, or is it a combination of all three? Because that's not taking that middle section away very well at all. I mean, it's taking the bulk of it away, and if you've just made a little boo-boo at the side, you know, you can soon clean it up, that's not a problem. But it's not really lifting the way I would I would hope that pastel would lift. So here, here's our orange. Look at that though, that's so rich, so, so rich. So let's try and match that. Let's try and make a, let's try and make an orange. So we've got the yellow there and I'll pop some red over the top of that and then we'll blend it together. There we go, look at that. So we are able to mix colours very well indeed with these and that's given us a lovely orange, look at that, isn't that pretty? And let's take a dark colour now. So this, this blue is lovely as well. That's lovely, lovely, lovely. So if I if I was to blend that out, and let's see what happens when we try and use our lighter colours over the top. And you can see that's standing out really nicely. So we're able to work over the top pretty well as well without disturbing too much of the pigment underneath. Now obviously if it's blended out underneath, you've lifted most of any excess pigment that's sitting there, which gives the colours that are going down on top a better chance to sit there without too much hassle. Again, let's try with the yellow. There we go. 
So we're able to layer on top as well. Your other alternative as well, and this is something that's always a bit of a shame with these boxes, if you want to spray with fixative, now I know a lot of pastel artists don't like spraying with fixative because it alters the colours, but if you're going to be working in subsequent heavy layers, you can spray this with a workable fixative and it'll keep this in place and then you can just go back and put your next layers down without disturbing what's underneath. Most of them are in aerosol form, so they're in a spray can and there's a lot of restrictions on shipping aerosols, which is why its subscription boxes tend not to have them in. If you do want a fixative, and I say no, not everyone agrees with them, I like to use the Windsor & Newton yellow label fixative. This is their workable fixative. This is readily available in the UK. I know that in Australia and the US, the Krylon brand is really popular, and apparently their workable fixative is really good. So if you are, if you're elsewhere, you can maybe think about that if it's something that you're interested in. Okay, so I just want to test out a few more colours. I've got this little space down the bottom. So let, let's do a let's do a, a sphere and let's have let's do the, the, the little shading exercise that everybody gets taught. This and uh, maybe a little bit of bounce light as well. And I want to see how, how rich we can get this. Got a bit blend happy there, didn't I? Well, let's start building up some colour now. Now what's interesting to me is that when I'm doing this, when I'm using the blending stump, I'm actually picking up most of the pigment. You know, most of it's coming back up onto my blending stump rather than rather than the, the paper gripping it. So there we go, that's uh, that's fairly interesting. And again, it's back to this thing about the, the paper and uh, I'm quite picky about paper. But also if we decided we wanted to highlight, when, when an object's sitting on something, light will always reflect off the surface and bounce back up, hence the reason it's called bounce light. So if we decided that that was quite severe, we could add in some white here just along this bottom edge. And again, with a clean side of the stump, just work that in. And that's worked reasonably well. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm, qu I'm quite interested. I'm not so sure about this paper, honestly. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try this on other paper, which is actual, actual pastel paper. Okay, so this is one of my favorite pastel papers. It is pastel matte. This is really expensive paper, 360 GSM, and it comes in a variety of colors, as you can see. So if we take, there we go. Let, let's take this kind of like sandy color. And let's just see how this fares. And that is that is like grabbing onto that pastel stick. Like it's, you know, like it's, life depends on it. Such a light hand. And let's take this lighter yellow. So that's not going to show up as much on this paper. But you can still see it. It's still there. So it makes a huge difference having mid-tone paper. And I say it's something that I favour for pastel. Um, and you can see why. It's just, it just makes things a lot easier to work with. And these pa these pastels behave beautifully in this paper. So, really interesting set of supplies. I'm glad that they've included the pencils because that, oh, because that gives us a lot of options in terms of working in pastel. And beginners often find it easier to, to work with pencils just because you've got that sort of precision. So I would say that's a, that is a, a fairly, a fairly well-rounded box. There's lots to lots to do in the tutorials, that kind of thing. So now what I want to know is your thoughts on the products and the box as a whole. And also if you would like to see me do any of the tutorials that are in the magazine. Normally with these boxes, I'll do one of the tutorials that comes in the magazine and then later on I'll do my own artwork all by myself, just so that I can really get into it and you know get a lot out of the box. So please feel free to open your mouth and let your guts rumble down in the comments about that. I'd love to hear from you. And as I say, um, I, I'm, I'm impressed with this box. And for someone that's maybe not sure about pastels, maybe don't know whether they're keen on them, this is a great box just as a start kit to see if you like it and if you don't like it you can easily give these to someone else because there is everything that you need so my only my only real downside for me was the fact that they've given us white paper if this had been mid-tone paper i would have been absolutely over the moon about this box i also like the fact that they've got the upgrade box as well so if you do decide you're into it you can buy some more colors so that's it for today guys. I want to thank you very much for watching. I've had a great time today. I'm pretty, pretty dirty now that my fingers are pretty grubby. I'm going to go and get washed up. So 
All that's left to say is please stay safe and take care of each other. And I'll see you back here in the cave on Thursday for another video. So have a good day, everyone, and bye for now.